Hello everyone and happy Friday to you. If you are watching this video on the day that it was posted, it's Friday. If you're not watching it on the day that it was posted, I still hope your day is going well. We're on the last day of our lemonade stand assignment. And so one of the final things we need to get organized and do some planning for is to actually think about what our stand is going to look like the physical space where we're going to set up so that we can have our product available and hopefully with yesterday's sign and slogan you're going to persuade people to come visit your lemonade stand so a couple things to consider today one you're probably going to use a table of some sort this is where you'll put your product you'll put your cups you'll keep your supplies and so as you think about the table you'll use, you might even know that you have a table at your house that would be perfect for the job. If that's the case, you're going to do some measuring. We're going to find the area and the perimeter of that space, which would be in this case, if you use a table of the top of that table, which I'm guessing is going to be a rectangle. If you can't think of or don't know if you have a table that would work, you can just create a table. You can sketch it out on a piece of paper. So you're going to find the perimeter and the area, again, of what is most likely a rectangular shape. You might need to, again, if you don't have a table, that's fine. You can create a drawing of, we would call this an overhead view of the table. If I was looking down on the table, I would picture my little cups of lemonade sitting here. You want to measure the perimeter and the area of the rectangle. Think about units carefully. We studied this earlier in the year. Think about how the units are different for area and perimeter. The other thing, so you're gonna find the perimeter and the area of your tabletop. I'm also gonna challenge you to find the perimeter and the area of the sign that you made. Again, it's likely a rectangle. And it doesn't matter if it was a small piece of paper or if you had a poster board that you were able to use. And again, if you didn't have that physically or you didn't create it yet, you could, again, make a rectangle. Think about how big you would want that sign to be. So you'll want to think about your unit of measurement. You might have some measurement tools at your house. Here's a meter stick. This might help you if you kind of look at this. My board is almost a meter, almost 36 inches. So you might use a measurement tool, especially if you don't have the items in front of you to think, well, I would want my sign to be about 20 inches wide and I would want the length to be maybe 10 inches. You can make up the measurements. You'll want to think about inches, centimeters, meters. What's the best unit of measurement for you to use? Again, so you can find the perimeter and the area of a rectangle. So for your actual stand, which is probably a tabletop, and for the sign that you made, you want to find the perimeter and the area. Think carefully about the units and I'll leave some information for you in the description below if you don't remember how to find perimeter and area. The other thing I'm going to challenge you to do as a final step to use those math brains is to think about what you know about prime and composite numbers. I want you to look at your sign where you might have the name of your business, which could be as simple as Mr. St. Clair's Lemonade Stand or your name in my place. Maybe you came up with another creative title for your business, but your slogan as well. Here's what I want you to do count the total number of letters on your sign so every single letter one two three four count all the letters you'll find your sum your total amount of letters and then i want you to think about does that total number of letters fall into the category of a prime number or a composite number and how do you know that it's prime or composite that's the final challenge for you. So hopefully your designs are going well. The great thing about these videos is you can start from day one and you can get caught up over the next days or weeks. 
So enjoy the process, keep using your brains, have some fun, and we will see you next week for a new challenge.